Lamborghini went and made an SUV. What's the deal? Well, it has a four liter twin turbocharged V8 partnered with an eight speed automatic and rated at 650 metric horsepower, which translates to right about 641 American horsepower. The V8's power is distributed to all four wheels, but mostly the rears for maximizing the thrill factor. Torque vectoring magic helps distribute power laterally between the rear tires. Four wheel steering imparts the Urus with improved low speed agility and high speed stability. A standard adaptive air suspension varies the ride height, enabling a maximum 9.8 inches of ground clearance, and the whole shebang is built on a common platform with the Audi Q7 and Bentley Bentayga. Question number one, what's the Urus like to drive? Well, it goes a little something like this. Driven with maximum gusto, zero to 60 acceleration takes about three and a half seconds. And if you keep your foot in it and have a long enough bit of tarmac, you can hit almost 190 miles per hour. Mm. If you're cruising around suburbia, driving the Lamborghini Urus is just like driving a normal luxury SUV. Uh, it's quiet, sight lines are good. Oh wait, an on-ramp. Let's see what happens if I do this. Huh. All right, it's a little bit a little bit zippier than a normal luxury SUV. The key takeaway is that the Lamborghini Urus certainly has a domesticated side, but it also has a spirit of aggression waiting to be unleashed. Will you unleash it? I will. A base price of $200,000 plus $3,995 in destination charges gets you plenty of power, luxury, style, and probably attention. But that asking price also buys some interesting quirks. The quirkiest bit is this region right here. They call it Tamburo. And it includes, see, you flip this up here, you can start the vehicle. Then you have the Anima Drive setting. Doot, 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 doot. This is the, the Ego setting. And then if you want to select reverse, it's this whole big wad, you just pull it back that direction. And then for drive, you can just pull the paddle shifters right up here. There's a manual button. There's a lot of complexity happening in this space, but it's a Lamborghini and I think that's kind of expected. Also, I really like this pattern here in the wood. That's, that's nice and fancy. Oddities aside, the interior of the Lamborghini Urus is exceedingly well outfitted. I mean, glorious stitching, soft materials, this leather looks like your grandfather's old couch, but in a good way. Um, nice wood materials here. It's like really fancy. Also, if I look over my right shoulder, this might be the easiest Lamborghini I've ever had to look out of the back of. In terms of occupant space, I'm five foot 10 inches with a long torso, and I have plenty of headroom up front here. Nice place to put my arms. The steering wheel feels good in my hand, comfortable seat. The question is, how's the back seat? Moving rearward. This is the five passenger version, so there's a middle seat here. They also have a four seat version. Great leg room and uh, good foot space up there. Uh, if I sit upright, my hair barely touches the headliner. In fact, I'll get over here so you can see it a little bit better. Just barely touching. If I was six feet, it might be just a little bit cozy. But I don't know, I'd willing, willingly sacrifice a little bit of headroom to sit in this luxurious space. Oh, Alcantara, ooh, Lamborghini logo on headrest. Fancy pants. For most Lamborghinis, we wouldn't waste time talking about cargo space, but it is an SUV, so what does the artist have hiding behind its boot? A uh, bunch of stuff from another car, apparently. But that looks like a pretty good amount of space, actually. If you needed to haul some, some actual gear, yeah, that's a, that's a pretty decent cargo hold. And then I'm also noticing over here, there's this button that you can use to raise or lower the vehicle for uh, easier cargo access. As I push it down, it'll now drop on Tim Denon's poor head, Whoa. thus injuring our otherwise... Oh, I'm sorry I got in the way of your car. Terribly sorry. Terribly sorry. Awfully sorry I got in the way of your car. <laughs> <laughs> and she powers down. Look at that boot. For customizing your Urus drive experience, there's the Anima Drive Selector. Strata, Sport, and Corsa offer escalating degrees of on-road excitement, but when off-road, there's Sabia for gravel or sand, Neve for slippery surfaces, and Terra for rough roads or clearing obstacles. There's also a customizable mode called Ego. I can't imagine why Lamborghini named it that. 
Compared to its LM002 forebear, the Urus is undeniably more refined. Nonetheless, Lamborghini has provided us with some dirt. So how does the Urus fare off pavement? I'm making my way along through some brush and along some dirt here in Terra mode. And yeah, it's fine. <laughs> to be honest, I could probably make it through this in Kelly Blue Book's long-term Honda Odyssey minivan, but I don't think I'd look quite as cool. One of the interesting things about driving a Lamborghini Urus off-road is that the tire sizes go from 21 to 23 inches, which means you don't have all that much sidewall to work with. So I wouldn't treat it as a real off-road toy. And you know if you clip a rock, it's wheel that's going to hit it, not tire. I wonder how much a 23-inch Lamborghini Urus wheel costs. All right, we are now in the high speed portion of our off-road experience. This is Sabia mode, which is kind of sporty. And with a little bit of throttle, you can step the tail out of touch. I feel a lot of ABS intervention as I get on the brakes, but it's probably because we're driving on tires that are not awesome for off-road. Let's try and drive like a jerk. At higher speeds, the Urus makes more sense because it's a little bit sportier. You can kind of kick the tail around a little bit. This is a lot more fun than pretending it's a rock crawler. It is not. If the question was, can you have fun in a Lamborghini SUV off-road? The answer is yes, but you also have to add speed. That's the magic ingredient, speed. Of course, being a Lamborghini, we should probably acquaint the Urus with a racetrack. In a track environment, we're reminded how quick a modern SUV can be. Oh my gosh, the Urus is quick. It's easy to be dazzled by the acceleration, but the Urus's braking is similarly impressive. In fact, maybe more so. 17.3 inches of brake rotor up front, along with 10 piston calipers, carbon ceramics, massive braking power. On tarmac, there are three key drive modes we're looking for. Strata is the mellowest. We can go up to sport though, and what's remarkable about sport is how well suited it is for track. The transmission does a brilliant job keeping the Urus in the proper gear at all times. Even when you come up to a, a braking zone, it automatically downshifts. Hard brake at the five, downshift, downshift. The Urus has active roll stabilization, <laughs> and it's <laughs> true enough, very flat in the corners. Despite being a tall vehicle, the Urus feels properly sporty. I wasn't pausing for dramatic effect, I was just drinking it all in. All right, let's go for a maximum track effect, Corsa mode. Ooh. Unlike every other Lamborghini that the company makes, in Corsa mode, the Urus will handle automatic gear changes. You can still select manual if you would like, but it will operate automatically which is kind of convenient and it does a really good job. If I was a less engaged driver, I could just sort of leave it and let it do its thing. Now let's get paddle shifty. Here comes that hard brake. What, what? All right, no surprises here. The Urus is incredibly fast. One fun detail is just how different the Urus sounds when you have it in the different modes. So this is Strata and it feels very quiet. You're not gonna offend anybody when you uh, show up to the, um, the home goods or the, uh, the Trader Joe's. When you pop it into Corsa, oh, you start to get that Lamborghini sound. Physics being what it is, the Urus is never gonna drive like an Uricon, but I'm told it can lay down faster laps than a first generation Gallardo. For an SUV, it is objectively fast. Good thing, because its muscular haunches, pronounced angularity, and Lamborghini badges conspire to make an intense proclamation of speed. Where some ask why, the Urus asks, why not? Why not offer a commanding view in a Lambo? Why not infuse pragmatism into a brand known for impracticality? Why not make a Lamborghini that's as adept in the school pickup line as it is on the racetrack? Why not have a race series based around an exotic Italian super-fast SUV? No joke, the Urus Race Series starts in 2020. I mean, if everything else in our world is changing, why not build a Lamborghini Urus? If you love Lamborghinis, you think SUVs are neat, and you have the cash, the Lamborghini Urus is a rockin' good time. Ego mode, engaged.